You don't get this opportunity much in life to be able to have such a hands-on approach. And that is what makes it special to build your own home. That's why it's so great to be doing what we're doing. On this episode of Building My Dream Home, Zach begins his journey towards building his custom, one-of-a-kind home. We'll take you behind the scenes of Golden Eagle Log and Timber Homes and show you how the building process begins. Join us as this picturesque lot is transformed from dream to reality. It's a crisp fall day in central Wisconsin. And at Golden Eagle Log and Timber Homes, it's business as usual, as custom homes are being designed, engineered, and manufactured. A family-owned business since the very beginning, Walter and Marlis Parmeter got their start in 1966, first as a building supply company. Then, in 1986, the business expanded into a one-stop custom log and timber home manufacturer. Today, the second generation continues to run the company, with brothers Jay and Todd at the helm. It's been a part of their lives since childhood. He had me driving the forklift by age probably 11, to where I could go out and unload a semi, bringing in some lumber. I was already uh, helping some of our customers out in the lumber yard side of things. You know, here we are, 13-year-old and 10-year-old kids waiting on customers, so um, it worked, but it, it, some of the customers didn't believe us. With over 5,000 homes sold since 1966, family remains an integral part of the business. We're actually talking to the fourth generation. He's three years old and he really likes forklifts. He does draw some house plans with me too. So he's, a, he's a, maybe the fourth generation. But we need this. This is the deck. But, but how is it going to set down though? Oh, it'll set down just fine. What's on the wall, tongue and groove? Tongue and groove, I think. Tongue and groove or half log? Half log. While Golden Eagle sells around 100 homes per year, one in particular is in the very early stages of development, a home that is inspired by its family heritage. My name is Zach Parmeter and I'm part of the third generation here at Golden Eagle Log and Timber Homes. My sisters and I, my cousins, we've been working here since we were little kids. We pretty much grew up here. And it's always been just a natural part of us. Instilled in him from a young age, Zach has more than his share of design ideas. Now it's time to build something for himself. For me, it is so much about the detail being done just the absolute best way. I mean, that is, that gives me goosebumps. And that is what makes it special to build your own home. That's what makes it so cool to, to do this whole process, that it makes it all worthwhile. And that's why you're building a new home. You're not living in someone else's home. And you get the chance to do it the perfect way for you. It's not gonna be perfect for someone else, but it can be perfect for you. And that is what's really cool. That's why it's so great to be doing what we're doing. Now, one of the very first steps is to figure out how much you can spend. So that's why you have to go to the bank. The appraiser is going to tell you how much they're willing to loan you. And you're going to have that figure. And then you need to make the decision, well, how much do I actually want to spend? Once you know what you want to spend, then we need to start filling in the puzzle pieces. Well, how much is your land going to cost? How much do you plan to spend on the, the actual house itself, as well as any amenities? Now in my case, I've already had the land for a few years, so I already had that part of the equation all figured out. I have a beautiful five acre wooded lot, and I think it'll look perfect for a log and timber home. I had a pretty general idea that I wanted about a 2,000 square foot ranch style home. I knew I wanted two to three bedrooms on the first floor. I always figured I'd finish off the basement in the future. Uh, I knew that with these Wisconsin winters, I'd want an attached garage, that was important to me. Golden Eagle's Clearwater floor plan was selected as a starting point for Zach's home. Everything about this plan seemed pretty spot on, but there were some tweaks I wanted to make. I mean, it's, it's a good starting point, and, and all of our customers are doing that. They're always customizing it just for themselves. So once I had a general idea on what I was going to build, then I could get that floor plan to builders, and they would tell me you know, what they would probably charge for something like that. We didn't have contracts yet, nothing is set in stone. 
I don't even have the floor plan fully figured out. There's still things I want to change, but it helped me get a sense on right, this is where pricing is probably going to come in at. And that was really helpful for me because then I was able to enter the design process with an idea on, you know, where can I make changes to the house and still stay within budget. The design process is really fun because this is when you start to really visualize how the home is going to sit on your land, how you're going to use that land and where you're going to clear the trees and, and excavate. I actually went out there and I ribboned off where my driveway will be and I got an idea for, okay, well, well this house, this would sit perfectly here, but I'm actually going to orient it a little bit more this way. And that way I get more natural, I get the morning sun flowing through the house and I get the evening sun also coming through the house. It's all about facing the windows the right direction. A lot of our customers actually do that and I, I, I see why they do. Now that we have everything marked off, we'll be able to tell the excavator where to clear the trees, then we can get going on things once the snow melts. It's really fun to, to be out there doing that. And it helps you make decisions on, maybe you need to move where the garage is going to be so that you get a better view or add more glass to a certain wall. What I'm doing here is I'm actually filling out the driveway approach permit. Uh, this is so that I have an address for my build site location. This way we can have deliveries sent there and they actually know where they're going. Uh, so it's, it's kind of cool. You start to see uh, some more concrete theme, things become reality here. What we're looking at here is from this point to this point is 260 feet. So that's right here. We're actually looking at it from this perspective. So that's 260 feet. Uh, my driveway itself will be 14 feet, and then from this distance to this will be 33 feet. It was really easy for me. I already had a natural clearing in the, in the tree line. Really made the decision making pretty easy on that. My next step is to meet with the excavator, to walk the land, to get an idea on, okay, these are the trees I'm gonna clear out. I wanted to clear about 40 feet around the house. I mean, really you want room for the builder to be able to work. You need to be able to set materials somewhere. I've had plenty of customers that are building in mountains or, or on narrow lake lots. They don't quite get that luxury and they just work around it. But uh, you know, that's important. And that was important for my builder to know that you know, he would have that flexibility. With summer on the horizon and the snow long gone, it's time for the trees to be cleared from the lot. It was so cool to finally see some trees getting cleared. It was amazing. It's, it's already happening. You spend so much time thinking about it and, and planning on it. And then all of a sudden you start to see some action. Oh, it's just unbelievable. Zach is one step closer to living in his dream home. Subscribe and follow along as this log and timber home becomes reality.